Hello, general principles of agency. Okay, here is where we get into some big content um, for both salesperson and broker. Broker, you're probably gonna have about eight test questions. Um, salesperson, you're going to have at least 10 just on this idea um, of agency. So hopping into it, um, we've got uh, agency and non-agency relationships. And um, I will say, uh, knowing the definitions of a broker, brokerage, and salesperson is probably going to be helpful for you. Um, a brokerage is just the idea of bringing two parties together. It could be for real estate. It could be for insurance. It could be for uh, stocks and bonds trading. Um, that is just the idea of bringing two parties together. A broker needs to be licensed in order to receive a fee for providing those services, okay? And matching those people together. So to receive a commission for matching a buyer and a seller up, that broker now needs licensed. Then the salesperson comes in and they are basically working as an appointed agent to the broker. So all of the contracts, all of the commissions, all flow through the brokerage. And the salesperson is basically the leverage um, to go out and work with buyers and sellers. Then another level of that is a non-agent, which is gonna be all of your unlicensed assistants. Secretaries are, uh, is a word I've seen. Um, executive assistants is a word I've seen. Um, and I'm sure we've used all of those as well for those of you that are existing agents. Um, those are your folks that do administrative work, um, but again, are not licensed. A transaction coordinator um, or a transaction facilitator uh, would be another example of that. Um, Duties to your clients, uh, these fiduciary responsibilities that you hold uh, as duties to the principal, your principal in the transaction, which is the person that you are representing. Um, some of you may have learned this as old car. Um, I'm going to call it cold AC. Uh, which is a little bit different than how they have it listed on this outline. Cold AC, I consider to be care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and confidentiality. And I would say of your 10 plus test questions, um, if you're a salesperson, half of them could be around just this concept. Okay, so this is a big influencer um, on the exam. Um, care is the idea that you should know more than the average person because you are a licensed agent and you've gone through the coursework and requirements to obtain a license in your state. Um, obedience, um, I would note as definition that it is following the lawful instructions of your client. So your client asks you to do something, as long as it's within the law, you do what they ask you to do. That's the definition. Here's an example that I've seen. Let's say you've got 35 showings on your listing and the seller calls and says, Amy, take the sign out of the yard for whatever reason. Now there's two good answers that stood out to me in a situation like that. One, you would counsel them on the reasons why you want to keep a sign in the yard. I mean, you're nailing showings for them, right? You've gotten them 35 showings. And I think a lot of us as agents is probably what we're gonna do, but we're taking a test right now. So probably the best answer that I believe they're looking for is you're obedient to them. 
there's no law that says there needs to be a sign in the yard, so you remove the sign. You do what they ask you to. So that's when I would know definition and know a scenario. Loyalty. Um, this by definition says you put your client's interests above your own. So I would know that as a definition. I would also know it as a scenario um, that says you're out showing houses to a buyer. You open the door, you're looking through the property with this buyer and decide this would be a great pro um, property for my personal investment portfolio. What do you do? And your duty is to be loyal to them and put their interests above your own. So if they want to pursue the property to purchase it, you stay out of the way. You're not going to write an offer. You're not going to compete with them. You're there to support them. Now, I could see a scenario on the exam where they would ask your portfolio, your husband's portfolio, your mother-in-law's portfolio. If it has anything to do with an immediate family member, it's the same as it being you. So don't let that trip you up. The answer is still the same. You need to let your bar borrower or buyer pursue it and not compete against them. Okay, disclosure. Um, this says that anything that is of significance, such as a latent defect, must always be disclosed to all parties. Now, I've also seen this be a material fact. In Iowa, we call it a material adverse fact. And that is anything that would be of such significance, it would change a party's decision to go under contract or it would change the contents of their contract. It affects the value, it, or it affects, uh, affects the structure, integrity, structural integrity of the property, or it would be a major health concern. So for example, if the seller knows that there's radon at a high level on the property, they must disclose that. That's not something that as um, a borrower or a buyer or the buyer's agent, you just know by walking into the property. You don't just walk in and think, oh, my eyelashes went flat. There must be high rate on in here, right? You only know that that exists by disclosure or testing from a professional, okay? So anything that would affect, again, the value of the property, structurally or health, must be disclosed. If it can't be seen to the naked eye, it's got to be disclosed. Now, I can see a radon system that's already in there, but without that, um, I don't know if there's radon or not, again, without it being tested um, or having the seller disclose it. Here's the great test question. So know that by definition, but here's the great scenario that I could see them layer on an exam. You've got a seller that you meet with that says, Amy, I don't want to disclose this because I think that it will deter a buyer, but I've had water in the basement. The foundation has a crack and leaks. But again, I'm telling you this because I don't want to fill out the disclosure and risk having a buyer wanting to purchase because of that flaw in my property. What do you as the agent do? Again, there's two really good answers. One of them is don't take the listing. Don't work with a liar. And that is probably what your real estate attorney in your real estate attorneys in town would tell you to do. Protect yourself. There's another answer on the exam. But again, we're taking a test. We're trying to pass a test here. Another good answer, though, would be it doesn't matter. Because you know it, even if the seller decides not to fill it out, you still must disclose it to all parties. And that's probably the best answer, okay? Accounting is kind of a power packed um, little uh, blurb that could show up on state or national. Um, and accounting basically says, 
Um, you should be able to provide a pro progress report um, to your clients. In Iowa, it's upon request. There's no 30 day, 14 day, five day notice. Um, if somebody wants an update about the status of accounting and the progress of their um, transaction, you must update them immediately, okay? It also says that there's probably a timeline when you must deposit earnest money. And in Iowa, it's five banking or five business days. There's also um, a note that says anything a client signs, they deserve a copy of. So who signs a listing agreement? That's going to be the brokerage and the seller. So the seller gets a copy of it, not the buyer. Who signs a purchase agreement? Both seller and buyer. So they both get a copy of it. So anything, something, so, anything that a client signs, they must get a copy of it. And then the last part of that says, your state may require you to keep copies of all files for a certain number of years. And in Iowa, so this will be a state question, it's a minimum of five years. The big one around this topic for accounting is these trust and escrow accounts. And escrow accounts um, are other people's money that we're holding for them to use at a later time. And we want it in a separate account from our general banking funds that we use as brokers to pay rent, copy paper, salaries, toilet paper, keeping the lights on. That's the general funds. We don't want to put someone other, someone else's deposits um, or trust money into that general fund. We want it in an escrow account. That way it's labeled. That way if the broker files bankruptcy, you don't lose a deposit either for rent or for earnest money putting it down on a house, okay? Shifting money from that escrow or trust account into the general funds is highly illegal. It's called commingling. And I think you absolutely need to know that for the exam. And another key word that ties into commingling is the word conversion. So commingling is kind of the noun. Conversion is the verb that makes it happen. Okay, so review commingling, absolutely. The last one, we've, got, we've done care, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, accounting, and the last one is confidentiality. And this simply says, anything that would put your client at a disadvantage when negotiating, you shouldn't share. As a seller, their bottom dollar that they're willing to accept or any other terms in what's been advertised. A buyer, the opposite, their top dollar. Um, or another term other than what they've written. Okay. Powers of attorney and other uh, delegation of authority. What I'm going to say is a power of attorney has got to be real estate specific. Um, another delegation could be a conservatorship. where someone has the authority to act on your behalf. Um, next up, we have the creation of agency and non-agency agreements. Um, and then disclosure of conflict of interest. Here's what that is, is it's implied versus expressed agency. Express agency specifically outlines we are working together to find your home or to sell your home i'm going to start working for you on this day it's going to end on this day and here's the fees involved to do it it's very clear implied agency is when we're running around doing all of these things but we've never had that formal conversation uh, with the client and a really good example of this that you can google is Google Taylor Swift. 
she was sued by a real estate agent a few years ago who had sold her what it sounds like to me a town home and then the neighboring town home she found out those sellers were maybe looking to sell and was interested in having <clears throat> excuse me units side by side so she called her agent who showed her that unit and he just showed up and went through the motions then he followed up with her and she didn't return any phone calls and he assumed that meant she decided not to purchase it later he found out that she purchased it directly from the seller like a for sale by owner and he sued for his commission dollars and lost and that was because he had an express definite contract when she bought the current property she owned but then he just implied and went through the motions with the second one and never had a formal discussion about actually representing her and what that looked like and the agent lost that case okay disclosing conflict of interest is probably going to be around dual agency and dual agency is not when i represent the seller in this transaction and then i go and i represent those same clients to purchase a home that's not dual agency dual agency is when we represent um both parties in the same transaction we represent both buyer and seller for the same property that is dual agency representing a seller sell and then a buyer go off and buy another house that's single agency twice now this talks a little bit about listing contracts which i believe some of this is also going to overflow into actual contracts um which is coming up um listing contracts you're going to have four you're going to have exclusive right to sell you're going to have exclusive agency you're going to have open listing and you're going to have net listing exclusive right to sell says um, the seller hires only one agent and no matter who sells it the agent or the seller the agent is going to get paid exclusive agency says that the seller is going to hire only one agent but the seller still retains the right to do a for sale by owner Okay, so you've got to be the procuring cause as the broker to get paid on that one. An open listing says the seller can hire multiple listing agents, still retain the right to sell it on their own. So whoever's procuring causes, the broker is the one that gets paid. Why? Why are we using that one? Well, there were days before the multiple listing service. And the internet, we sold real estate before the internet, right? Where you want to let every broker in town know your property was for sale. So it was popular then. Net listing is the fourth type. And that's where the seller says, you know what? I just want a hundred grand for this. And then the agent goes out and lists it for an undisclosed price to the seller and keeps the difference. So the seller doesn't know whether it was listed for 145, 117, 105 um because the broker is keeping the difference and not disclosing it that's illegal and illegal in iowa it's illegal in most states but it is illegal in iowa because we're not disclosing the true costs of our services now anytime you got a buyer or a seller in an exclusive or an exclusive right to sell agency agreement you cannot approach that client and solicit them for their listing unless they approach you first otherwise you've got to wait for it to expire okay um 
Um, responsibilities of agents to customers and third parties. We've talked about that a little bit um, in terms of disclosure. Um, I think termination of agency is gonna be a big one um, for you on the exam that you might be asked a couple of different times or a couple of different ways. Don't let that freak you out. That doesn't mean you answered it wrong the first time. It just means you got lucky and two of those auto-populated into your exam uh, QBank. Um, these are reasons that an agency agreement can terminate. The contract expires. You complete it. You did your job. So if you got an agency agreement from June 1st to December 31st, you did your job. Uh, termination by force of law, such as maybe a bankruptcy. Um, destruction of the property or death of the principal. And by mutual agreement. And when we say death, really what we mean is principal, buyer or seller, or the broker, not the agent, not the salesperson, because you weren't in charge of contract anyway. So death really means broker or buyer or seller. And again, this is for agency um, agreements. Okay, um, that is principles of agency um, as a wrap up and review.